Hi friends and welcome. My name's Steve and in this video we're going to see how we can get started creating our first pull request in GitHub. Pull requests can seem quite intimidating to newcomers to open source but honestly there's not too much to worry about and actually once you've done a few they become quite straightforward. What we're doing when we create a pull request is that we're requesting that a project owner pull changes from our fork into their code base. So let's get started. I'm starting here in the already repository on GitHub. Currently we're viewing the issue that I have worked on. We're going to click on the code tab to take us back to the repository homepage. You'll see that a new banner has appeared above the code listing. This identifies that we have pushed code to a branch recently. GitHub has a lot of integrations like this that monitor what is happening in your fork of the code and provide context aware options for you when you are viewing the main repository. In this case, we can use the compare and pull request button that we're now shown in order to start the pull request process. Clicking the button takes us to the open a pull request page. You'll see that the pull request title is already pre-populated with the git commit message that I used. On this screen, we can do a number of things the top area shows us what branch we are looking to merge. On the left hand side is the fork and branch that we are requesting our code be pulled into. In this case the base fork is the HDBox already project and the base branch is the master branch. On the right hand side you can see that we're requesting the code come from our fork on the 2204 branch that we've just pushed up. The UI also identifies if our code will be able to be merged. This would identify any merge conflicts that may have occurred in the code base. We might have a merge conflict, for example, if someone else has been working on the same file that's included in our commit. Scrolling down, we can see a diff of the changes we have made. This is a good time to check that you've only included the changes you intended to in your pull request. This looks good to me, so I'm going to go ahead and create my pull request. Scrolling back up, I can give a little bit more detail in the comment for this pull request. I'm going to start by typing fixes hash 2204. When I use the hash, you can see that GitHub starts to offer auto completion for issues and pull requests in this repository. By including fixes and then the issue number, this will automatically tie the pull request back to the issue that I am addressing. This is really useful because when this pull request is later merged, that issue will get automatically closed at the same time. This reduces the maintenance for the project owners. It also means we get nice hyperlinking between the issue and the pull request if people want to navigate between the two. I'm then going to include as much detail as I need to in order to advise the project owners what I've changed and why. Sometimes this may just be a simple one line comment, but if you've provided more complex changes, you may want to summarize the decisions you made and some of the key points around what you have actually changed. If you're changing something that involves the UI, it's often good practice to take a screenshot and paste it into this comments box as well, so that the owners can immediately see what the UI changes look like. This is fine for this example, so I'm going to click on the Create Pull Request button underneath the comments box. We have now completed our pull request and been taken to the pull request page. Once we make a pull request, a few things may happen automatically. The first is that GitHub confirms that this branch has no conflicts with the base branch. This means the code can easily be merged in. Depending on the project, you may see some additional checks. On the already project, we have integration with a product called AppFair. AppFair provides continuous integration builds for GitHub repositories. What this will do is build our code according to a build script, and then, included in that build script, run unit tests against our project. This is really useful for project owners as it allows them to verify that the changes haven't broken any existing unit tests in the project. As AppVera is integrated into already, this kicks off automatically and the build will now be running. This may take a few minutes, so I'm going to jump to when that completes. And there we have a green tick. All of our checks have passed. Our code can easily be merged. And we also know that the code builds and that unit tests are passing. At this point, we have created our first pull request and the project owners can now review the changes that we are proposing. 
Let's simulate a requirement for a subtle change to this pull request. On another account, I've gone in and made a review comment on this pull request. As the author of a pull request, you will get notified by email if there are any changes requested. It's also good practice to check on your pull request periodically to make sure that they're not waiting on anything from you. In this case, we have a comment for an additional change. Here we've been asked to remove an additional space that the author noticed within the paragraph we were adjusting. It's a bit of a trivial example, but it will demonstrate what you may see on a real world project. We're going to leave a comment to let them know we're happy to work on that. I can now jump back over to, in this case, Visual Studio Code to make that change. Once my change is complete, I'm going to go back to my command window. I'm just going to double check using git status of where I'm at. You can see that our file has been modified again. I'm going to use git add to stage those changes. I'm going to use git commit and passing in the message for the commit. I'm going to clear the screen so that we can see what we're doing more clearly. And then I'm going to push that change back to my origin. So I'm going to use git push origin and then the branch that I want to push up. That will add the new commit to our fork of this code base up on GitHub. Once you've made a pull request, any changes that you push to the branch that you're requesting be merged in will be reflected in GitHub. You can see the app there is now running again because we've made a change to this pull request. And after a few minutes, we can see that again all our checks have passed. In this video we saw how easy it is to begin using the GitHub UI to create a pull request. GitHub detects changes in our fork automatically and presents us options to start the pull request process. Once we started our pull request one of the important things we needed to do was to ensure we included the fixes then hash issue number in our first comment. What this does is tie the pull request and issue together so that as soon as the pull request is merged, the issue automatically closes. And then finally, we looked at how we could update an existing pull request simply by committing the code locally and pushing to our branch. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.